It's a game called Avalon. In Avalon, you are all knights of King Arthur going on a quest. Uh, except some of you aren't actually knights. Some of you are minions of Mordred or evil, and you're trying to undermine the quest. The good guys are trying to successfully complete their different quests, and the bad guys are trying to ruin or thwart those very same quests. So, we don't normally talk too much about setup on these videos, but this one is pretty important, so we'll break it down for a second. Uh, first of all, you have different boards based on how many people are playing the game. So we're going to do an example as though eight players are playing the game, but on the other side of this we have a board if there were seven players. Uh, and it says right here there's going to be three minions of Mordred. So what that means is each of you is going to get a card, and some of you are going to get a card that says Minion of Mordred, that means you're evil. Some of you are going to get a card that says Loyal Servant of Arthur, that means you're a good guy. One of those loyal servants is going to be Merlin, who's going to be an especially strong good guy. And one of those evil people is going to be an assassin, who's an especially strong bad guy. So we've got these eight cards. Again, three of them are minions of Mordred. That means the other five are going to be blue, where they're going to be good guys. You're going to shuffle them up, and you're going to deal them to everybody face down. So everyone's going to get a card, and that card is going to tell them whether they're a good guy or a bad guy. So if I was this player, I'd, my card is blue. That means I'm one of the good guys. At no point during this game will you reveal your card, as that would obviously uh, give away your identity. And at no part in the game can anybody ask you to describe physical characteristics, that characteristics on your card, because your inability to answer it would also make it conclusive that you are or aren't a good guy or a bad guy. Uh, as far as the game is concerned, everybody is pretending that they're a good guy, because the bad guys are trying to get away without being identified as evil. However, the bad guys do know who the other bad guys in the game are. There's also one special role for the good guys, that is Merlin, who I mentioned earlier. He is also going to know who the bad guys are. So what's going to happen at the beginning of the game, and there's a script inside the rule book if you want somebody to read it out loud, but everyone's going to close their eyes. Then, either somebody's going to read directly off the script, or if they know it well enough, they can just paraphrase. Basically, what they're going to say is, all of the bad guys look up and acknowledge each other. So all the minions of Mordred look up and see who each other are, and then you're going to close your eyes again. Then everybody's going to stick out their hands in like a fist. And it's going to say, everyone who is a minion of Mordred, raise your thumb. Merlin, open your eyes. Merlin looks around. They see who's got their thumb up. They now know who the bad guys are. Merlin, close your eyes. Everybody put your thumb away. Everybody take your hand back. Everybody open your eyes. So now all the bad guys know who each other are. And Merlin knows who the bad guys are. Now, the key thing about this is that if at any point in the game the bad guys figure out who Merlin is, the good guys are going to lose. So Merlin somehow needs to get the information of who the bad guys are to the other good guys without being identified by the bad guys. Or the good guys need to figure out who the bad guys are without using Merlin's help. Each round, people are going to be going on a quest. So someone's going to start. They're going to get this fancy crown that's going to go in front of them. And they're going to decide who of the other people at the table they want to send on a quest. Whoever they want to send on a quest, they're going to put one of these shields in front of that player. How many people they're going to send on that quest is indicated by the numbers on this board. So quest one, they're going to send three players on a quest. So let's say I choose a player here, here, and here. We all now discuss whether we think these three people should go on a quest. Do we think they're good guys? Do we think they're bad guys? At the beginning of the game, you don't really have much information. But as the game's going along, you're sort of getting more and more of a feel for who you think is good or bad. And so you might argue more vehemently against a certain group of people or for a certain group of people going out. Your goal, if you're good, is basically to send only good guys on the quest. We're going to debate it as much as we want, and then everybody's going to vote on whether or not that group goes out and attempts to complete that quest. So everyone's going to start the game with two of these. They look the same on the back, but one of them says approve, one of them says reject. So after we're done discussing, everyone's going to put one of those in front of them, based on whether they approve of this group or don't disapprove. When everyone's placed their card, everyone's going to flip them over. If a majority of players approve of that given quest, the quest is going to go out, they're going to try and either succeed or fail. If it's a tie, or a majority of players vote against the quest, then that quest doesn't go, and what we're going to do is we're going to use this vote track here. We're going to move this forward. That means the first uh, mission never went out, and now we're on to the second mission. And who has this crown, and therefore who gets to decide who's going out on this mission, passes to the left. So it goes clockwise to the next player. They take these cards, 
and decide who they want to send on the mission. They can send any three players they want on the mission. You can send yourself if you want to. You can actually propose the exact same mission which just got rejected the round before. It's up to you. But you decide who you want to send on this mission. Again, people discuss and again, people vote. If they keep on rejecting, this is going to go around the board. And if we ever have our fifth vote and the fifth vote, that fifth set of people going out, that's rejected, then the bad guys win instantly. So obviously you don't want that to happen. Hopefully, somewhere before that point though, we're going to actually get a mission that goes out. So everyone who's going on the mission gets two cards. One card says fail, one card says success. They receive those cards, they can shuffle them up so nobody knows which one is which, and they play a card into a pile face down. So everybody is going to submit a fail or success card into the middle from their two cards. And then everyone's going to take the card they didn't play, they're going to put that in a pile, and that pile is going to get shuffled up. So both piles are going to get shuffled, so we don't know who played which card, and we don't know who, who discarded which card. Then what we're going to do is we're going to reveal all three cards for the people that are going on the quest. If they're all successes, which in this case they are, the mission is a success. We've got this token right here. It's blue on one side. It's red on the other. We're going to put a blue success marker right here. This vote tracker is going to reset to one. The crown is going to pass to the left. And now we're going to send out a next mission for mission two, which is going to have four people. If even one of these three cards is a fail, the mission fails. That means we're going to put a red marker on the first quest. This is still going to reset to one. We're still going to rotate this crown to the left. We're still going to go on to the next mission but we have one failure under our belt. So all it takes for a mission to fail is one fail card. Now here's the key thing. If you're good, you have to play a success card. If you're bad, you can play either a fail card or a success card. So if you're bad, you want the mission to fail, but you also want everybody else to think you're good. So maybe you play a success card so that it looks like you're a good guy. Maybe you play a fail card because you want the mission to fail. As the game goes along, these different spots are going to get filled in. You'll notice that Quest 4 is the only one where there have to be two separate fail cards in order for it to fail. And the exact mechanics of all this will change a bit based on how many players you're on, you're using, and which board side you're using. But if at any point we get to three success tokens on the board, that means the good guys win. However, the bad guys have one final chance to steal victory if we've got three success tokens on the board which is they can guess who is Merlin. So again, one person has been Merlin this whole time, they've known which of those players was a bad guy. Bad guys can discuss as much as they want, but whoever was the assassin when you first passed out the roles at the beginning of the game, that person decides who they think is Minion, who they think is Merlin, they kill that person. That person then reveals their identity. If they were indeed Merlin, the bad guys win. If they were not Merlin, the good guys win. It's also possible we'll get to three fail tokens instead of three success tokens. If we get to three fail tokens, the bad guys win. Period, end of story. Good guys don't have a chance to steal victory. Uh, there are some other roles that are also in the deck. So if you want to get more fancy with it, you can put those into play. They each have their own set of rules, which you can read about in the rulebook. But this is basically the basic version of how you play Avalon. Enjoy.